Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Everybody's been so hospitable and friendly, and thank you so much for having me. This is exciting for me because I never in a million years thought that I would be a Christian. I would have never. I used to argue with Christians. I was just telling this sister. I used to literally be like, oh, no, they're going to come and convert me, these people. You know, I come from a background where it is looked down upon. I, I literally thought somehow that, you know, this Jesus stuff, that's just for white people. That's just the white people. I, I had no clue of the power of the living God. And I searched and searched everywhere. I had delved into Buddhism. I had delved into uh, Jainism. Uh, I, w I was born in India and I came here. My parents are Hindu, so I had a lot of Hindu influence and, and background. And so I, had, I was studying deep into the Upanishads and the Gita, and I wasn't taking it lightly. I mean, I had been searching my whole life for something deeper than this, what we see, just this world. So I was looking and looking hard in all the wrong places, which, praise God, I find out now. But um, that brings me to, 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 the, to the yoga part, which has everything to do with my spiritual journey because it wasn't a journey of just exercise and fitness, it was a spiritual journey. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about yoga, the way that it's advertised as something that's just good for your body and, and nothing more than that and it's harmless and it's innocent and just, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You see it everywhere. But that's, that's the deception. This, this yoga is so much deeper then people realize, now I know there's different types of people here today, different backgrounds. Maybe someone's thinking, well, when, you know, I go to yoga class, I do the stretches and everything because it feels good and I like the exercise part of it. But when they start doing the chants and stuff, I just say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, and that's it, you know? And that's the way I go about doing it. Or maybe, you know, you're one of those that do Christian yoga, so-called Christian yoga, where they're doing yoga postures and then doing scripture and Bible verses. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. But whatever the case may be, uh, we'll be looking at what it really is, and I'll be getting into that more later on about um, our perception. Coming to yoga as a Christian, what does that really mean and entail? And so before anything, I just want to start with my, my journey, what I've come through. So basically, I grew up here in the United States. As I said, I was looking for all of these, these uh, spiritual things. I was doing meditation. I was doing all the breathing exercises. I was doing everything. And I was so excited when I found out about this uh, organization with this guru. And, and it was called Isha Yoga. And I was so excited because I wanted to get enlightenment in this lifetime. And I was so about it because I said, no, I, I can't wait a second further. I want to spiritually progress. And I was so dedicated to wanting to, to grow spiritually, that I got involved in this at such a deep level, basically 15 hours of what would be considered yoga a day. And that was what other people were doing as well. And, and yoga means different things. It's not just 15 hours I was standing on my head or doing something, you know, some posture. But it entails, you know, working towards the organization and doing things. And, and if you're serving people, and that's one type of yoga. And if you're just sitting there doing some meditation, that's one type of yoga. But it was a constant thing. That's what people don't realize, a lot of people don't realize, is that yoga is not just the, the physical. Uh, which is known as the hatha yoga, the physical aspect. So all of these different types of things I was doing was yoga, and I loved it. Let me tell you, I got such a euphoric feeling from what I was doing. And I'm telling you that that euphoric feeling is so real. It is a supernatural thing that happens when you involve yourselves in these practices. But where is it coming from is the, is the thing. Because we know that the devil is a liar and he's deceptive and he comes steal, killing and destroying. And this is exactly what was happening is I was being deceived. I was being deceived into thinking that the, the euphoric effects that I was experiencing was because of a spiritual advancement, that I'm going somewhere, that my soul is, is connecting with the universe and I'm really getting somewhere. And the truth was that I was being deceived by Satan. 
And so, you know, there's different levels of this. This is really dangerous stuff. I mean, you could have never told me. You know, the whole motto of, of life these days is just go with what feels good. You know, if it's good for you, if it works for you, just go with it, you know? And that's what I was thinking. Well, who are you to tell me that something is not good? You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm feeling. I'm feeling good, so forget you. You know, that was my whole, that was my whole thing is don't tell me what to do. I'm doing, I feel good. And that's the thing is, is when I talk to people that are still in it, the same thing keeps coming up. Well, I feel so good. I feel so good. And it's so good. It's addictive. Just like a drug, right? Because it does, a drug isn't good for you, but a drug gets you addicted. And so I was addicted to these practices like a drug to be able to sustain that euphoria and think that I'm really going somewhere. You see how he set it up, the devil? It's really, really intensely deceptive. So as I'm feeling better and better and better, I'm going through more and more classes, getting deeper involved, deeper. I had decided to actually uh, go to the classes in, in India, live in India, give up my whole life here, and just give everything up for this, and, and full-fledged for the rest of my life. I was that devoted into this because it just felt so right at the time. And I'm talking about, when I say euphoric experiences, it's not just kind of a, a lightheaded, oh, that's nice, buzz. Uh, when, once you get into it real deep, real deep, there's different types of manifestations that take place. Like um, laughter, I would, I would just start laughing when I'm starting to do the things. And this is at the intense levels, okay? I would just start or, or shaking. Okay, or I would feel different sensations, all kinds of sensations, or I would just start, um, you know, running around. There's different programs that, that they would do, and I would just start running around. I'd just get this energy. I didn't know where it came from, and I just had to let it out. Or you'll start dancing or, uh, you know, all kinds of manifestations that I thought, this is great. I'm really connecting. And I, I mean, now looking at it, it seems like, whoa, that should have been a red flag. But <laughs> so many people are so deeply involved that, when, that it, it would never occur to you that this is anything but good uh, at the time. So I was having all these types of manifestations, thought it means that I'm, I'm progressing and I'm going forward, and the truth was, um, was, was completely, completely different. And I ended up in India getting sicker physically and I thought, you know, when we get sick, we were told, you know, that this means that it's just, you, you're just not doing something right, or your karma is coming out, and you're just, you need to just clean it out, and you need to just go with it and go through it to be able to, to get better. And so all these things, it didn't make sense, but I kept doing more and more, kept getting worse and worse. Well, I ended up getting so sick that... Um, like deathly ill, basically, very, very sick, okay? And, but I still held on and clung to the yoga as, as the solution, even being deathly ill for the, for the longest time. And, um, you know, I didn't realize that the altered state of consciousness that I was allowing to take place through the different things that I was doing, whether it be the breathing techniques and the chantings and the invocations and the the uh, postures, all of those things work together. The deception that, that we see now is that you can just separate one from all the rest and that it's just purely physical, but they all go together. They were in, designed from the inception to go together. It's been made for that purpose. In fact, yoga means yoke. That's what it means. Now, who are we yoking to? Right? Because this is, if it means yoke and you're yoking, you're literally, what you're yoking to are Hindu gods, which are demonic. So what I now realize happened was that those manifestations, those symptoms that I was experiencing were actually because I was allowing demonic forces to overtake my body through this practice that I was doing. Now, if we understand this, how deep this gets, then we, when we look at going to yoga for just purely harmless physical exercise, we better think twice because we better understand where we are getting our entertainment from or our um, exercise from. What is the source of this? The source of yoga has been Hinduism. You cannot separate the two. 
I just want to explain that, that invocations and chantings are a very important part of, of yoga, of Hinduism. You may see in some cl classes people say Om and they do the, the whole thing and they chant different things. Well, let's just understand what that is. What is an invocation? Literally from the Wikipedia source right here, it says, invocation is defined as the following in Wikipedia. An invocation from the Latin verb inno invocar, to call on, invoke, to give, many, may take the form of supplication, prayer, or spell, a form of possession, command or conjura conjuration, self-identification with certain spirits. The word possession is used here in its neutral form to mean a state potentially psychological in which an individual's normal personality is replaced by another. This is also sometimes known as aspecting. Possessive invocation may be attempted singly or is often, like, okay, goes on. It says, allowing themselves to become a vessel for the spirit or deity. The person successfully invoked may be moved to speak or act in non-characteristic ways, acting as the deity or spirit and may lose all or some self-awareness while doing so. This is no small thing. That's straight talking about demonic possession. And that's exactly what was happening to me. But of course, the devil doesn't come out with his two horns saying, hey, I got you. You know, he is absolutely coming as an angel of light. And we'll look into those scriptures and, and more details later. But so we see what what is what we're invoking here, these chants are for a reason. They're used for a very specific purpose, along with the physical aspect, the postures and the stretches, along with the breathing, okay? You're doing all of these things in conjunction for what? To open yourself up to a demonic realm, okay? So that's what it does, and I'm so glad that, that I ended up getting sick, praise God, because I got to see the truth of the end of it, it's going to come sooner or later. The euphoria is not going to last forever, you know? And it all came tumbling, crashing down. And it was the biggest blessing of my life, actually, when I got to see what the truth of this is. But at first, I didn't see it. At first, I tried to cling on to anything else but the living God. And as I came back from the United States, I mean, came back to the United States from India, lost sick. I mean, I was so sick with, with a condition that many doctors could not understand what it is with all kinds of fungal, bacterial, uh, parasitical issues, digestive issues where I would eat food. And, and this, well, before I explain the symptoms, this, the, the manifestations, the physical manifestations take uh, different forms for different people. So this was mine is digestively I could hardly eat. I would eat and just be in pain. I'd be rolling on the floor in pain and nothing could help me. I could only eat certain foods. So there's, there was nerve issues where I would twitch. I couldn't breathe. There was, uh, I thought I was dying. I was in that moment dying. I went to the emergency room. They just couldn't understand what was going on. I couldn't breathe. I mean, it was horror. I was twitching so hard with seizures during the night I could barely sleep that I actually ended up hurting myself through the, the, the seizures. And uh, skin manifestations and um, lesions and sores and, and itching and, and crawling things and, and uh, more attraction towards bugs. It's like, you know how some people get uh, like mosquitoes, they, they bite them more, some people more than others. It's like that, but with all kinds of bugs, just like I'm attracting bugs, like I'm a bug magnet. Just crazy, weird stuff, weird stuff. Along with all the, the physical stuff was making me to the point of absolute desperation, where I tried everything. I spent all my life savings trying to, to get physical help, like what treatments I could find, anything. Um, doctors didn't understand, so they just thought, okay, she must be mental. She just needs to be put in a mental ward. You know, <laughs> they, they didn't understand what was going on. It was so much deeper. And um, until there were some doctors did some blood work and, and took some samples, and they found out that there is something going on, but they called it mystery, mysterious. They didn't know. And so they, they did say that there's definitely, um, you know, weakness in the body. So that all these things... And, and while this is happening, I'm waking up in the middle of the night, 
uh, choking myself. That's never happened before, literally choking myself. And I'm thinking, okay, that's strange. I've never done that before. And I would, I would uh, be getting suicidal thoughts. I, I, I would be visualizing a dragon with wings. And I didn't know what any of this meant, just, just all kinds of, of weird stuff. And then something happened that really changed my perspective. When in front of my mother, who is not a believer, you know, she's Hindu as well, uh, she, I said in front of her, I said, in a voice that wasn't even mine, I said, I'm going to take you all down with me. In a, in a fit of anger, I said that out loud. And after I said that, I just sat there for about five minutes in total shock because I couldn't believe that what was happening. We were taught that there was no, in yoga, that there's no real good or evil. Of course, no, no. There's no evil. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. You know, everything is just a consequence. You just have consequence to actions. So for me to think that this is possession or there's something demonic, I didn't even believe in demons. You know, um, it was out of the question. So, but this happened, and I knew that that I had to change my thinking quick because this is something outside of my box. So I started looking deeper. I was like, Mom, I, t I said, that wasn't even me. And she said, yeah, it didn't sound like you. You know, I was, I was so angry all the time. I was so angry with my situation, too, that I just, I was just filled with anger and just kept getting worse, and, and my health kept deteriorating. I mean, I was in such bad health condition that I was forced to, to be bald. Um, my, my condition was really, I was very thin, uh, didn't talk to anybody. Didn't have my, any friends, my spiritual community, my great spiritual community, where were they when I needed them? They were not there to be seen because I wasn't helping build the establishment. And so uh, I was basically, uh, I felt very, very alone. And I didn't know any real Christian people, really Holy Spirit filled. I mean, I'm talking about born again, believing Christian. There were some people that professed some things, but they were also new age, and I didn't know anybody, nobody to really guide me in, in truth, uh, in, in person, that is. And so I was alone in my room, living with my parents, forced to live with my parents, because I couldn't even live alone in the apartment that I, I was. I was actually um, just forced to, to just deal with it by, in, in a vulnerable position, right? Like, I'm forced, I'm living with my parents, I'm sick, I'm dying, these weird things are happening, nobody can help me, they think I'm crazy, they want to lock me up, I'm alone, there's nowhere to turn, I might as well commit suicide, is what I concluded. And I wasn't kidding, it wasn't for attention, I was serious. And I, I devised a plan to go to the railroad tracks uh, near where my parents lived, and I said, if nothing gets better, I'm going to go to the railroad tracks, and I'm going to just end it. I'm going to find out the timings, and it'll be quick, and I was, like, excited about it, because I was like, yes, I finally thought of something. I had hope that that would actually relieve my pain, and for, that actually gave me relief, and I would sit in front of the fireplace, I remember, and, and just imagine in the middle of the night, I would sit in front of the fireplace and just imagine my body burning up, and I would get so much relief from it because that, I thought I won't be in this earth any longer, and oh, the pain will be gone, and I won't have to deal with any of this. That's, that's, that's how low I was. And we know that a broken and contrite spirit, he does not despise. All my pride had to be gone. I could not hold myself up to any of the, the ideas that I had before, any of my own ways, my own thoughts, my own understanding of life crumbled. And that was a great and beautiful thing because he lifted me up. God is, is amazing when we are really humbled. It's our pride that, that keeps us away. I was so prideful. And even with nobody to really witness to me, um, you know, the way that he, he led me, into truth. So here I am, you know, suicide, all of these things, and I thought, let me just try one last attempt to see if anything can help me on the internet, you know, because that was my only way of really finding anything out, my, my uh, communication with, with the world. And so I was looking on the internet, 
And I kept coming across the Bible, and it was annoying me. It's like, why out of all the things, the thing that I don't want these man-made traditions, I don't want these things, oh, I'm so sick of, why does it keep on coming up, you know? But at that point, I was like, so desperate that a lot of that went, and I was like, okay, well, what? Keeps coming up, Bible verses keep coming up. And what, for me personally, what kept on coming up was the Lord showing me that the times that we are in are, are prophetic, that they're not just normal times. I mean, can, you can look everywhere. The wickedness is rising. There's prophetic signs everywhere. And so I was like, okay. And he, you know, showing me stuff about Revelation 13, 16, and 17, and Mark of the Beast, all kinds of stuff he was showing me. And I thought, well, okay, that part of the Bible is true, but the Jesus part that people talk about, that can't be true. You know, maybe parts of the Bible are true. That's my conclusion at that time. But I said, well, let me do an experiment to find out the truth before I actually commit suicide. And I said, okay, I got on my knees humbly and I, I just said, okay, this is before I uh, actually got saved and Holy Spirit filled, but I just said, okay, if this is true, I was just kind of communicating, and, and I, if you're real, and what people say about you is real, there's really a man that came to earth and died for my sins. I mean, that just sounds like a fairy tale to me, God, but if this is all real, and I'm not going completely crazy, you died for my sins, as people say, and all this, I'm calling on you now. I'm calling. I said, then help me, show me, you know, I'm, and I just said, I just basically burst out the name. I said, Jesus Christ, like that, and the moment that I did that, my body started shaking because the demons in me trembled. The word is true, and it says that the demons tremble at the name of the Lord. And that's exactly what happened. And that, that started, like, really was a, uh, freaking me out, but I was surprised that it actually had a reaction. I was not expecting it. I was like, yeah, well, you know. And it really actually started, and that built my faith. I started having, I said, okay, there's something to this. I didn't know much, but I, I, I wasn't completely submitted. I was just kind of testing out, you know, but the Lord was showing me that there's, this is, there's power in the name for sure, and, and he was showing me things, and so I said, okay, I got to get a Bible, and I, I my, this time my parents are thinking, I'm really lost my mind, you know, <laughs> oh, here, now she wants to get a Bible, now she's trying to do the Christian thing, you know, she's just one of many things that uh, she's just trying out, let her do her thing, whatever, you know, but um, I did end up getting the word, and as, as reading that, you know, it started building my faith and just what the Lord was showing me with, with different things. And I just said, I remember, I didn't realize how significant it would be for me to really give my life to Christ, like how the eternal consequences would be and, and how it would be for this life. How, in fact, I don't even remember the date because I, I didn't think, like, here I'm doing something big. But I just remember that. Uh, you know, people kept saying all over where I was looking and in the Bible and everywhere on the internet, people kept saying, you know, you got to give your life to Christ. You got to completely submit. You got to ask for forgiveness of your sin. You got to ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. You got to make that initiative. You got to want it. You got to be sincere. And you got to just, it's, it's a thing of the heart. And I just kept hearing it. And you know, that seed was getting planted in different places. And I heard it enough that I was like, I'm going to do this. I got to do this right now. And so I ran upstairs and I completely um, remember, I just said, okay, here it is, have it all. Here it is, have it all. And I just gave it all up. And I asked for forgiveness of my sin. I asked him to be my Lord and Savior. I said, I'm going to follow you now. Now I'm convinced I, I'm going to follow you now. This is it, like here, here's my life. And that moment, I didn't realize how huge what I did was. But from that moment, my life changed. The anger that I had was d just not there. Even my parents noticed it, that my dad's like, it's really weird. She doesn't get mad about anything, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was straight. I was this different person. I was just calm. I mean, they would literally, sometimes there'd be people just yelling, manifesting different things in my face, and I'd just be like, I love you. And then I'd go and pray for them in my room, and they're like, what the heck happened to our daughter? But, th you know, the thing is that it was a totally new transformation. I became completely new and transformed, and that, and it, which is totally different than before, even when I had the, the false peace, and I seemed loving and peaceful towards all and everything, totally different, which we'll get into later. But so this happened, this transformation, and 
things started changing. My healing started, physical healing started. Um, everything, the way that I looked at everything changed. Uh, I didn't have the anxiety. I mean, my parents were so like, no, you have to have anxiety meds, like you're, you're really out of control. And they said, here's three times a day, anxiety meds. And I didn't need a single thing. I didn't need nothing. I had the Holy Spirit living in me. And it was amazing. Then I started, um, you know, my healing was not an instant healing. The Lord can do that as well, and he does, and he has, for sure. But mine was a gradual healing, and I praise God for that because I learned a lot. It helped me to, to grow and, and to keep me in a, in a place where I can, I can grow. But I did start healing, and I started just focusing on, on how I can, you know, share this with others. I don't want anyone to be deceived. And I was so thinking that everyone's just going to be like, oh, wow, you just showed me. Now I'm, I'm understanding. I'm coming to Christ, you know. And so I had that naive uh, thing about me, and I went out, and, and then I felt so much rejection. I felt like, why aren't people really taking what I'm, I'm, I'm serious? Like, God is real. <laughs> you know, like, the Bible's true, and people are not getting it. And so it was a little bit, um, you know, of a, of a challenge, but I kept going, kept going, kept sharing, and I, I shared my testimony, and I started making YouTube videos, and that was my way to really um, communicate and, and, and share with others, and so I started sharing, you know, whatever I would feel led to share in, in the Bible. I made videos, I was just sharing all these things, and the YouTube video is called From Occult Yoga to um, Jesus Christ, and it ended up going viral, and I never thought in a million years, I just made it like on a just quick, oh, I got to share this, and then people started asking me questions and coming to me, and I ended up starting to, to pray with them and help and minister to them, and, and they would be telling me different things about their experiences with yoga and what they've come out of, and, and how they, the, the Lord, you know, has literally use the, that video, that five minute little video where I, I, you know, didn't ever think it would become this. Use that video to show them and lead them out of yoga and how their life has changed and they've come to Christ and all of these things. Um, and I was just in awe and amazed and I would continue to be able to, you know, pray with people and, um, you know, just minister and it's been going on since then. And so countless people I ha have uh, encountered that we talk about these things and it just reaffirms, I'm like, yep, I know what you're going through. I've been there. I know, I know the Lord's the only way. And, and people are, are seeing that because the deception is so great. And so many people come to me saying, I am a Christian and I have been doing yoga and some, the Holy Spirit has been convicting me about this. You, you don't know how much I hear that. And then they, they end up saying, because they're really seeking, and they're like, Lord, is this really what you want? Because once you know, you're held to an accountability. I mean, you, you, once you know what this really is, you have a choice to make. Do you want anything to do with that? I mean, can we really make excuses that it's just physical exercise when we know how deep it really is? Do we want to be partakers of anything that has to do with demonic oppression in the demonic realm, right? And so the Holy Spirit convicts people when we're really seeking and saying, what do you want me to do, Lord? And it has been leading countless people out of that deception. And so praise God for that. They have been, um, you know, seeing the, the truth about this thing. And then there's, there's you know, there, there's those that want to justify and try to you know, skirt around it, and we'll talk about that later. And so this is why I'm, I'm really hoping that, and I, I pray that these words that I'm speaking, you see that this is, this is the truth of what this is, that it can go deep inside of you, that it, it, it hits and lands on good ground, that you can see and understand that, no, this, this is not something that I want anything to do. Not only that, but to speak out against this in, in love, because a lot of people don't know. And so it's, it's, it's something that has taken everybody by the storm, yoga everywhere, yoga everywhere. And so, um, you know, and when, 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 you know, the devil doesn't give up in trying to, to do his tactics and snares, it's in, you know, until, until his uh, time is up, hallelujah, his time will be up one day. <laughs> but until that day, 
You know, there's going to be all kinds of deceptions, tactics, and snares that are just laying wait. And, and we can't just underestimate the, the, the true tactics of the devil and just write it off as, as nothing. I mean, there's a reason that the world exalts it so much, right? We're not supposed to be partakers of, of the world, and this is something that the world is exalting. And the, the devil really is always working. Just, just an example, after I got saved, I mean, I had... Immediately, I had this uh, uh, indigenous medicine doctor, a, a witch doctor type of person that came, and I didn't even know certain things, and I was just thinking, well, we do everything in the name of Jesus, and then that's, then we'll be fine, and I thought, okay, yeah, you could, I had no clue, I was just so fresh in this. She ended up coming to my house, staying, saying that she's going to help me completely heal, doing all these things, and she started calling on uh, different spirits and saying she was talking to my grandmothers and doing all this stuff. And immediately I was like, no, something's wrong. You know, as I was seeking the Lord, he was showing me that this is, this is really wrong. That very same week that that lady came, there was a, uh, a false prophet guy that said, oh, come and follow me. And he would talk about the Bible. He would talk about things that seemed, you know, like he knew what he was talking about. But he said, no, you need to come follow me. And only then you're going to be singing to the world because he knew I'm, I sing. And so he's like, oh, you're going to be singing to the nations and you're going to be healed and you have to follow me, follow me. And you have to come to where my church is, which was eight hours away. And, and the Lord, and he did some weird stuff on me. And I knew the Lord showed me in a mighty way after prayer, that, that that man was false and not to follow him. Show me clearly. The Bible says this. He's teaching this. That's bad, you know. But the, the point being, I've been through so much, so many different um, experiences. I knew that, wow, the same week, I get shortly after getting saved and then all these things. This man comes to my house. This witch lady comes to my house. They're just trying to do something to get me off track. And the only thing that I was able to, the, the way that I was able to discern to get through that, it's like there's landmines everywhere. How do I get through this? You know, the only way is through that complete submission to God and asking for, for guidance because he will guide those. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so we don't have to be afraid of, oh, everywhere we go, the devil's going to do this, the devil's going to do that, the devil's going to, no, no. We don't have to be afraid if we're really following God and we really know that we are willing to sacrifice the things that sometimes, you know, we like in our flesh for God. If we're willing to sacrifice, that's what he, he expects us to do. Sometimes we do the things we don't like to do. It's not exactly fun when everybody thinks you're crazy because of your faith. It's not exactly fun because, you know, you, you speak out against something that's so common and everyone thinks, like, you're just in the old, old age ways of thinking, you know. And, you, you know, it's not exactly fun, but it's exactly what we need to do because we're called to do that because we're strangers in this world. We're pilgrims. We're not supposed to be partakers of this world, you know. And so these are things that we have to, to be aware of. And now that we know, hallelujah, because then we can actually share the truth. And the truth will set us free. The truth is going to be whether, you know, landing on good ground, according to the Lord's will, we just pray for people. If we share something that doesn't land on good ground, that's okay. We keep on praying for them. And I've seen time and time again with people, I mean, people that have even come to me and said, and, and been really mean at first when they're, when they're talking to me and saying, you are just so blah, 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 full of it, blah, blah, blah. And they go off. And later on, and I pray for them in my heart in love. I don't want to get roped up in what they're trying to, you know, rope me into their anger battle. And I just, I really in love, I'm like, Lord, help them and, and show them. And I just pray for them. And I've seen people, and I show them things about the, the real, uh, where the, the yoga really is from. Give them information. And and um, ask them to really pray about it. I said, there's nothing to lose if, if you're right, you know, about yoga, if yoga's fine or anything, then what is, the, they're lost in really praying about it. There's nothing lost in that. And many people have said, you know, I'm sorry, I really see it now. Um, you know, I, I've seen countless people just turnarounds, um, people that have been involved in, in the deepest things, you know, uh, and, and, re and the same exact symptoms keep coming up, lots of same thing with the kundalini and all of that. Um, I want to get into that. Okay, so I have some time here. There's, there's this quote that I have in the document that I wrote called Isha Yoga Roots. Okay, it's, um, it's online, it's on the website, it's called Isha Yoga Roots. 
Actually, it's at um, martismanistry.org slash download slash isha dash yoga dash roots dot pdf. If, if you happen to have a great memory. But anyway, <laughs> um, that basically I broke down everything. The Lord led me to write that. That's a whole other talk in itself. The Lord led me to write. I didn't even want to write this because I'm like, I'm done with that stuff. Why do I have to even, I won't even think about it. I want nothing to do with that. But even giving me dreams and saying no and, and showing me like, this, this might bless you to know what the, the dream was actually. The guru guy that I was following in my dream was sitting there and, and the people following him were all gathered together just like I used to be. And in my dream I walked in there and the Lord showed me that the, the, the guru guy tried to put some spell on me and keep me from sharing but that there's nothing that he could do. He became frozen. He became frozen and he could not touch me, he could not do a thing, and I went and told those people, you, you, this is false, this is fake. They mocked me in the dream even then and everything, but, but I, was, I was totally protected. When we're doing God's will, you know, that's the thing, it's so awesome. And so, you know, I understand that uh, a lot of people that come out of different, um, like when they're deep in Hinduism and stuff, they get scared of, um, you know, talking about it or going back to it or anything, but the Lord really showed me that the, his protection is like nothing that I've ever had in my life, and so he is there to help and, and guide and lead. Um, there's a, from this document that I wrote, he led me to write that, uh, I quote this, I quote this ex-guru and former yogi, Rabindranath Maharaj, and, he, and this is exactly true. He says, there is no he correctly states, he says, Brahma is the Hindu concept of God. There is no yoga that is purely physical. And there is no Hinduism without yoga, and no yoga without Hinduism. And if we really understand that, that that's a true statement, I think it will really give us a perspective about if we want to be involving ourselves in that, you know, um, what, if we really want to be yoking with that. So that, that's an important thing. Now, if we're just looking at this, people might not know what is kundalini, what is yoga, what do these words mean. Okay, so yoga we talked about, right? Yoga means yoking with, and, and who are you really yoking with? We look at kundalini, we can get a real idea of, of where this comes from. Okay, kundalini is defined literally, I'm not saying this, it's defined literally as the serpent force. The serpent, the serpent. The serpent comes up, the snake. We know who that is, right? So it says that it, you know, it's a serpent force that lies dormant in the base of the spine that just gets awakened and we all just need to, we just all just need the serpent force to, to be better. You know, we just need the serpent to awaken us, right? This is sounding familiar, right? Just uh, the Hindu statement that's really um, reiterated in this quote by my former guru, the one that I was following, he said this about Kundalini. He said, Kundalini is the plug point. Once you are plugged in, you can make the light happen. You are plugged into an endless source of power. That is Kundalini. Yoga is just the science of getting the plug properly in. If you look at it on one level, Kundalini is just another name for the source of creation. This is the Hindu sentiment. We understand a few things here. It's, it's a touted as a science, just purely a science. And that is a deception to be able to draw in people of different crowds. Skept, you know, oh, if, if they say, oh, here, welcome to Hindu God worship, a lot of people will not go for that. But it's a science. It's good for you, all the health benefits, right? And so that's the, again, you see that deception of science there. And so obviously we know that you know the serpent force did not create us, right? This is a lie from the from the pit of hell. And so 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15, as I said earlier, that no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Deception, we are so clearly warned there's deception. So what we think is necessarily right and good or what the world considers is right and good is not always the case. You know, we see that these demons are fooling countless people into thinking that 
you know, yoga is okay and that you're going to just, or, or non-Christians that you're going to get enlightened and it's not a big deal, or that it's just stretching, it's just exercise. And so if you look at really what Hinduism is, it's a personal works-based system of salvation. It's based upon one's works. And, uh, you know, essentially that, that you, can, you can become as a god through your works, what you do, right? And so if we look at what we really have here, we have a kundalini, which is a serpent force, right, that helps us yoke with Hindu gods, right? This is the serpent. And thereby, in doing that, we're disobeying the one true God and through the, the practice, uh, a pagan practice of yoga, right, with the ultimate goal of becoming like our own God. That's what it comes down to. This is sounding really, really way too familiar because the Bible describes, you know, the serpent luring people to disobey God with a lie that we can become our own gods. Genesis 3.1. Now, the serpent was more subtle, which means in the Hebrew 6175, cunning, than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and in 3, 4, and 5, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall, surely, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And, and I know that many of you already know this, but just to reiterate, we know the serpent is the devil. It says that in Revelation 12, 9, right? The old serpent called the devil Satan that deceiveth the whole world. That's what it, it, it's telling us, that he deceives the whole world. He has all these tactics and snares set up, and he is a liar. This old, the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, in Revelation 20, verse 2. So what you're really saying is, when you're doing yoga, is it's like the devil is saying, here, let my serpent force you know, guide you, and you'll feel good for your body and your mind and, and your soul. It's my serpent force that you need. Is that something that we really want anything to do with? Even if the physical part feels good? You know, it's, it's that euphoria that we were talking about. It's, it's not worth it. The, is it worth our soul? Is it worth really disobeying God if, if we know that God wouldn't want any part of this? It's like, you know, as I said, it's like drugs. It is, it is a type of drug. Are you willing to sacrifice a good feeling because because you know that that's not something that you know, the Lord wants us to do. If we say, okay, there may be somebody here saying, well, I'm not going to do the spiritual stuff. You know, I don't do the chanting and stuff. I just like the exercise part of yoga. So I don't see that it's a big deal. And this is really basically like saying, if, if you have a, a, let's say your favorite color is red. And you just love red. It's your favorite color, right? And you just, you just see this, this shirt. And uh, it's a red shirt, and it has satanic symbols all over it, like let's say a pentagram with circle and all kinds of different upside down cross, whatever, all the different satanic symbols, and you decide to buy that shirt and wear that shirt because it's red, and you like the red color. Now, if you think that you wouldn't do that, and no way would I be doing that, I'm Christian, I represent, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wear satanic symbols on my, if you think that you wouldn't do that, but you think it's okay to, to partake in yoga, and, and it, then we're deceived. That's just, there's, there's no way around that. That's what that really is, if you understand where yoga really comes from. You know, it's no different than like, um, uh, just another visual here. If, you're, if you have a group of people, and they're carving out on the ground, let's say a big pentagram with a, a, a circle in it, right? And they're all carving different pieces. And you just think that there's nothing wrong with going around carving it too, and you're getting good exercise while doing it. Why not carve it with them? Oh, well, but yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't believe in the, I don't believe in the, symbol, uh, in the symbol of the Satan stuff, but this is real good exercise. And I just love the way that the working the, the ground makes my arms feel. It just feels so good. But what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing a satanic pentagram, but that's not the point. I like my arms. They feel good. Is, is that worth it? Do you see what it really is? It doesn't make any sense to do it if you understand where it's really coming from. And that the devil's a liar and really deceiving us. 
you know, out of all the ways that there is to exercise, out of all the ways there are, we have to use the exact ways of worshiping demons because it makes us feel good? Really? Isn't that spiritual fornication? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 17, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and, I, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yoga, I'm here to say in love to all of you and in truth, and because of the love of God and in obedience to God, that yoga is an unclean thing, and it's an unfruitful work of darkness. If I was, if I you know, thought that it would be okay to say, yeah, you know, it's okay, to just, just, say that the, just say that you love Jesus and just do the Bible verses while doing it. It's not a big deal. You know, I would say that, but I would be directly disobeying God, directly. Sometimes saying the things that people don't want to hear is exactly what we need to say. Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them, expose them. Not only do we not take part, but we have to speak out and say, hey, don't go that way. Isn't that the loving thing to do? Which I share with all of you in love, not in, in, in any other thing, because I care. And that's why I share with others too. Look, if somebody's going backward, you know, behind, and they don't see a cliff coming, and they keep on going, they're just happy. They love going backwards. They're having a good time going backward. And there's a cliff right behind them. They don't see it coming. And we just sit there and don't say a word. That's not a very loving thing to do. They may not like that you're disturbing their fun backward walking time. <laughs> they may not like it. But they don't see what they're doing. They don't know. But we got to tell them. We've got to share the truth. Once we know, hey, no, don't go that way. Danger, danger, danger. You know? We've got to be really careful before we, we just write something off as it's no big deal. You know, 2 Corinthians 6.14 says not to be yoked with unbelievers. It says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That doesn't mean that we don't share and shine our light and be loving towards them and, and talk to them and everything. But it, it's talking about, you know, partaking in the ways of the world and ta partaking with the practices and things of, of the world, you know, how much more should we not be yoked to the practices of pagans, the practices of those that are in the dark? They don't know, and we just think it's no big deal? It, it's, 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 it's insanity if we really understand what we're doing. And so, um, you, you know, we know that the devil's a liar. So if we really know that, there's, there's something much deeper going on than meets the eye, much deeper. I mean, the devil's job just doesn't just stop. He's constantly going for, for a season. For a season, it's going for that, and it's for the purposes of, of yoking people. Yoking, I use that word intentionally. Yoking people into bondage. Uh, there's a quote here also out of the, the, the document that I think will be very revealing. Very, very revealing. Um, it's, I, it's a starting quote from the book, Occult Invasion by Dave Hunt. And it gives insight into something deeper also to understand what's going on. It says, quote, India's Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the world's largest missionary organization, Hindu missionary, right? Organization launched an ambitious, ambitious missionary effort in 1975, Allahabad, India at the Second World Congress on Hinduism, attended from about 60,000 delegates from around the world, one of the speakers announced, quote, our mission in the West has been crowned with fantastic success. Hinduism is becoming the dominant world religion and the end of Christianity has come near, end of quote. In the constitution of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Regarding its primary goals, it states, quote, to establish an order of missionaries, and it goes on, in all parts of the world. 
Okay, and, and speaking about the Hindu Vishwa Parishad, to go further, I'm quoting a documentary called the Gods of the New Age. The, it says, the Hindu Vishwa Parishad in its magazine very clearly states that yoga teachers are the front missionaries. Yoga teachers are the front missionaries in their own magazine of the Hindu Vishwa Parishad. An editorial from Hinduism Today titled, An Open Letter to Evangelicals, quote unquote, was reported on in 1991. The Hinduism Today editor, a Hindu monk, states, quote, there is a growing missionary spirit in Hinduism. It goes on, a small army of yoga missionaries is ready to go to the West, end of quote. That's from uh, Christianity Today that is quoting that can't be more clear what's, what's going on, right? It speaks for itself. I don't need to even add anything. It's just right there. It's right there. So there's something else going on. It's not just good and fine for, for health, which is the way that you know, it's promoted. There's really something else going on. And so just some scriptures that came to mind to, to really share along these lines. Romans 12, 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may approve what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 20-22, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink of the, cu the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? We cannot choose to do practices that are yoking with demons and claim to be yoked with Jesus Christ. Can't do them both. They don't go. In the words of, he says himself, in the words of Yeshua and the words of Jesus, he says himself, Matthew eleven twenty nine through 30, take my yoke, my yoke upon you. My yoke upon you. If yoga means yoke, right? What are you yoking? He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that interesting that he uses the same word? He wants us to yoke with him, which means yoga yoking is not going to work. <laughs> it's not the same as, as yoking with him. You know, if you, it's like it really is. This yoga is a, is a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, and no matter how much we want to try to change the fact that the, the you know the sheep, if it seems like if it seems like a a sheep to you, and it really just seems like a sheep, just t looking at it. This is what I hope this does today: just taking off the costume and seeing that it's really a wolf. The, nothing can change the fact. You can try to put Christianese on it. You can try to put. You can try to put some, oh, put, put uh, Bible verses to this, put, uh, you know, scripture to this, but is it changing the fact that you're covering up a wolf? Can't do it. You just can't do it. You can, but you'll be deceived, right? So let's, let's look at that. This is, a, this is infuriating to God. He does not want us to, to be part of this in any way, shape, or form. And if we just lift the mask, it's easy to see. And we know that he says we, he doesn't want us to have any appearance of evil. If we know now that we know, okay, this is, this is not what it's saying. And, and please, I encourage all of you, you know, do more research on this. If you have uh, questions and you want to know more about this, there's many resources, there's things that you can look into this and pray into this. And if you see the, the truth, 
which I'm sharing that it really is evil, it's nothing good at all, then the Lord says, do not have any appearance of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Nothing to even do with that. Nothing to do, we know that's bad. Okay, I'm not even going to try that, Lord. You don't want me to go down that route? I'll do something else. I'll, I'll, if it's just for exercise, I'll do something else. And if you think that you're somehow, which I've heard many people say, somehow getting closer to God, the one true God of the Bible, by, by doing this because they say they're doing the Bible verses and they're doing the worship, that's what Christian yoga is. It's a new movement. Yeah, it's, it's real. This is what they're doing. Christian yoga, it's an oxymoron. You, it's like having a Christ, uh, Christian Satanism, you know? You can't do it. It doesn't work. What excuses are we making? What are we doing? we got to look at this and see these people are deceived, and, and we don't want them to be. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want others to be deceived, so we have to share where this is really coming from. It's taking storm everywhere. You look everywhere. What, the marketing campaign is insane. Do you see it? It's like bigger than Starbucks now. Yoga on every corner. Yoga here, yoga there. This kind, this kind. If it doesn't get you from this side, you get this side. Oh, you don't like the health. Uh, if it's not just for the health benefits, your spiritual life will be better if you do it. If you do it, it's always good. Always, always, always good. Everywhere you look, it's being built up. This is what the world is exalting, which is a huge clue. It's a huge clue for, for why would it be exalted so much. And so let us not be deceived. Let us stand in truth. We who are truly understanding, we who are of the faith, we who, who that can see, we have eyes to see because the true living God, the Holy Spirit lives within us that we can discern the things and we can be able to press in in matters and say, okay, Lord, we have a personal God that will tell us which way to go, which way, right or wrong. He will help us through the landmines and guide our way through. Hallelujah for that. Who can say that? Only those that are the children of God can say that. The whole world lies in the deception of Satan, whether it be yoga or whether it be this or whether it be that. The whole world lies in the deceptions of Satan. And we, hallelujah, we can see through that because we have the living God who loves us, who's there for us to show us these things. He doesn't want us to be partaking in the world. And he will lead and guide our ways every single day in new and new ways. The more that we seek him every single day. And he will lead us out of these things. And, he, and, and when you share this truth with others, he, when you pray for them, things happen in the spirit realm. It is so powerful. We know that, right? I'm stating the obvious here. Things change. Prayer changes things. My favorite bumper sticker. I love that. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> Prayer changes things. And so when we're praying for these people that are deceived, it really, really makes a, a, a huge difference. I'll share a little bit more um, with you know, the, the question and answer about that, just about different people and, and what they're going through and them coming to the Lord and seeing this and how prayer has, has changed things. So let's not stop praying. Let's not stop seeking the truth. If there's any doubt in your minds today about what yoga really is, if there's any doubt, if you think, well, you know, this lady's a little extreme and out there, you know, it can't be that bad. If, if that's a thought in, in your mind today, I, once again, I, I urge you in all sincerity and love that you seek in your private time, you seek the Lord on this and ask him what his will is. Because even if your will is to do it, that's, it really doesn't, what you think doesn't matter, what I think doesn't matter. It's only the will of God that counts. That's it. It's not about what I think, little Indian lady, okay, or, or what you think. Our opinions don't matter. It's only about what God wants us to do that counts. And so if we put him at the, fir at the first and foremost place in our heart and mind, which he's called us to do, right, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, it's not just sometimes a little bit when we like it. It means giving our everything up. Even our bodies are, are, is a holy living sacrifice to the living God, everything everything up for him and he will bless that abundantly and he does and I've seen it over and over and over again when people have turned from this and they have come to the knowledge of the living God the way that he works in their lives and and blesses them I've seen it over and over again and it's such a blessing to see I know that he does it and he he wants that he wants our obedience that's our reasonable service right so let's really look at what this is and and just share it you know with others
And I, I, I'm, just, I'm just grateful to be able to share it with you. I know that the Lord did not have me do this, had go through all of this to just, as I shared with um, uh, Sister earlier, to just put it under a table and to just, you know, hide my, my light under a table. This is a reason that I'm sharing this, that, it, that, 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 that I've been through this. I know what this is all about. I'm here to say from the rooftop, you know, I'm here to say, danger, danger, everybody, please hear. And whoever can hear, whoever has ears to hear, you know, I pray that you can hear what, what God really wants, you know, what, what, he, what he's saying and what, he, what is really going on with the deceptions of our time. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again, Sister Purvy, for coming. You've been a blessing, and um, we just thank God for your ministry. Uh, so we just want to ask a few questions. Um, so you've, you've summed up what yoga means. We, we got that to yoke with the Hindu god, um, which is Brahman. Uh, so one question, is the average Hindu or a person who's a follower of the Hindu religion, are they aware that yoga is an inherent part of their religion or is this knowledge mainly had by the gurus and the spiritual teachers? So most everybody knows um, that's why there's a big backlash, actually. A lot of Hindus that are not gurus are getting really upset at the Christian yoga movement and such as that because they're saying, you're stealing our stuff and you're trying to put a label on our stuff that's really ours. And actually, it's true. But, um, you know, so they, they're aware that this is something that is supposed to be much more. They get very upset many times, actually, when people say that... Uh, Oh, this is this is just exercise. They said, "What? This is supposed to be? You're you're not making it sacred like it really is. It's really supposed to be spiritual." And so, yes, actually, it's something not only that they know, but there's a lot of speaking out against um, just labeling it as just an exercise, which is the hatha yoga, the one form of it. And they they get upset because you're ignoring all the other important components of it, which which is true. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and so you did mention the Hatha Yoga. For mm -hmm. some who may not know what that is versus the other, could you just give a little more explanation with that? Yeah, it's just the physical. The, like when you're talking about the stretches and, and, and the different uh, postures and stuff, that's what Hatha Yoga. That's why a lot of people say that they, they'll just do just the Hatha Yoga. You're doing the, the posturings, the physical aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, we understand that most Hindus believe you cannot separate the spiritual from the physical. They go together. Uh, and so if you can just help us understand a little bit more about what we're going to say maybe is BBM, maybe a great way for people to remember it. So if you can explain how the body poses, how the breathing techniques, and how the meditation exercises play a role in yoga, what do those do in the yoga journey? It's important. I'm glad that you brought that up because they're all important components. The meditation, the breathing exercises, and the body movements, they work together as a unit. That's why it was designed that way, to literally work as a system. So what you're doing when you're involving every part of you into this, um, you're altering your state of consciousness, for one. With, especially with the, the meditations and, and everything else and the, the different breathing techniques. You're, in a sense, you might have even heard the term emptying your mind and, and, and things like that. You're emptying it. So when you're, somebody said this, this is not something I've said, but I remember hearing it and I don't remember who. said, so when you're checking out, who's checking in? Good. That's you know? good. That's good. <laughs> right? Yeah, and I remember that. And it's it's true because when what are you emptying out? You you want to be aware and discerning. You're just giving up your guard. And so these are ways to be able to do that. Each component working with each other. Um, the the chantings, did you mention the chantings in there? No, no that, but that's, go ahead. Yeah, that's a that's a, as we mentioned, the invocations. Okay. So you're you're doing that and as if if you notice there's a vibration. They're all about vibrations and, and different things that happen to your body. And so you're, you're conjuring up these different sensations inside of you, okay, that is not your body is not made to do certain things. You know, it's not made that way. It's not God did not design us for us to be doing all of these things in, in this way. I mean, when we're doing that, it's opening us up to 
a, a whole different spiritual realm that is extremely dangerous. So, um, yeah, that, that's what it, that's what it really does. It's it's a combination of all of those together that that form the entire process of yoga. And even isolating it, just the the physical, or just the chanting, or just the bodily, uh, or just the um, breathing. Each one of those things, to know that it's a component of yoga, to know that that's what it was designed for, for that purpose, we we, sh- we got to be aware that it's not harmless in itself. Any one of those in itself. Okay. Yeah. So so the key is it's a system. And those things, the, the body postures, the, the breathing and the meditation is a part of a system. Yes. Okay. And, and what's really important to understand, obviously, stop breathing now because breathing is a problem. That's not the solution. And, or, or stop if you happen to accidentally make a yoga posture while stretching. Oh, no, you're condemned. It's not like that. It's obviously a much more uh, deep. So it's not a problem like if you're dancing and you want to stretch around and you happen to. I get this question a lot. And it's. It's important. People do ask this about if if you accidentally end up doing a yoga posture while stretching or, or um, dancing, is that a problem? And that's not a problem at all. Uh, that's not that's not the issue. It's not about it's about the system. Usually, yoga, like for example, with Surya Namaskar, it's sun salutation. It's done in a series. It's a set. It's a sequence of specific postures, one after another, and that's also revealing, right? Sun salutation coming from Egypt. You know, the sun worshiping the sun. So those are a set of postures that are done in a sequence in a specific way that incorporate the breathing as well as um, the posturing together. So those are the things to to be aware of. Okay, and so that's good clarification. Um, Could you give a distinction between just the breathing that they emphasize in yoga versus just normal breathing? What, What would the distinction be? Well, the ones I got into are really, really deep, but... um, it, it is about altering your your consciousness in a sense because breathing can do that. Like we normally breathe, and deep breaths are good too. And not that deep breaths aren't good, so don't. <laughs> I have to, you know. But <laughs> no anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, that's interesting because that's a part of, of yoga breathing too. Is a really short breath, and then they do the really long ones, and they do all kinds of different intensities with that to to change it. So, I mean, if you're making a real effort to, to breathe in a specific way for a prolonged period of time, you know, that's the issue. You don't want to do that. You breathe normal. It's good to deep breathe, get oxygen in your lungs and uh, all of that stuff. But you don't want to just sit there and try to, you know, alter your, your breath. Your, I mean, you think about your oxygen, oxygen is going inside your system in a, in a different way than normal, right. you know, uh, and it's not as a cause of more exercise or anything. It's just an abnormal way that you're causing your system to, to be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Um, to your knowledge, how are most Western yoga certification organizations training their instructors? Uh, do they typically train them to lead classes with the spiritual and the physical component, or are they certifying them just with the physical component of yoga? To, to what I understand, with major, vast majority of yoga teachers, um, where do they learn their yoga from? Right. So they're they're learning from where it came from. They're learning from from Hindu masters that have been uh, drawn out. So there's automatically there's Hindu components in there. Um, it's is not just physical. Now I've seen I've heard many people talk about going to yoga classes. And it's mainly stretching, they say, but then there's maybe a little chant here or there, and then they say they just do Jesus, Jesus during that part or something, you know. So obviously it's showing, it's exposing where that's really coming from. So it's definitely based in Hindu. There's, there's been no yoga without, like, the, like I quoted earlier, no yoga without Hinduism and no Hinduism without yoga. So whether they know it or not, which I think vast majority of yoga teachers, you don't get to that position of becoming a yoga teacher without really knowing its roots. People that get into that, they want to go way into it, and you know that it goes back. And so that's, that's um, the vast majority are, are definitely aware that there's Hindu components, and many, many of them... Uh, literally just involve those in their classes and those that don't those that are just doing the physical components and not the the chantings and and things like that they uh, are also partaking as we said in in the same thing without without knowing it uh but yeah deception that's that's yes part 
very, very deceptive. So, but and, and some more than others. So there's different levels. Some are just straight all out. It's just lots of chanting and lots of meditation. Actually, I used to, before uh, I was involved in Isha Yoga, I went to a couple of yoga classes, Western yoga classes, which was strange for me. I, I never usually did that. but And they would have the meditation part as a big chunk of the class was that and the chanting and then the yoga as well. So it's all that intertwining. Yeah, so the 24-hour fitness or, tw- or planet fitness, all of those, it you, we have need to have our antennas up and, yeah. and know that that definitely can be a part there. Yes, yeah. yes, and whether they say it's just purely physical s- stretching and they're they're doing the yoga and it's just purely the yoga stretches, even then they whether they realize it or not, which most of them do, they are partaking in a system of practice that is demonically inspired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so. In your opinion, uh, a Christian, it's an oxymoron to say a Christian can safely practice yoga. Yes, yes. <laughs> because of the system and where it's come from. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and so in regards to uh, your personal journey, what drew you to get involved, so deeply involved in a practice like yoga? Were you searching for something or how did that yeah, and, and as I touched on in, in the beginning, for sure, it was a spiritual journey. It wasn't a journey for fitness. <laughs> it was a spiritual journey, I mean, deeply, because I was very committed uh, to want to find something beyond this life. And so as I experienced all kinds of hurts and, and pains and stresses of this life, I was looking anywhere but the Christian, you know, any, anywhere but from the, the Bible, away from the Bible, looking anywhere else where I could find um, help and, and hope. And what I discovered was that the, the euphoria and the different false peace mm. and false sensations of, uh, you know, doing yoga was to me, I thought, oh, I found it. Oh, I found it. I found what I'm looking for for my soul. And this is going to last many lifetimes because we believed, I believe, you know, Hinduism believes in uh, reincarnation. And so that was my whole thing is it was a deeply spiritual journey that led me to get involved at such high levels. As I said, I wasn't just a, a casual yogini. I was deep, deep in it for only the spiritual component of it then I had to learn the the stuff that went along with it but you know that's all part of it for example in the institution that I was in in Yoisha Yoga um, there's many different classes for different types of yoga within the Isha Yoga and one of the classes you need in order to go to the highest levels uh, uh, and and progress is, is a Hatha Yoga class Hatha yoga, one of the just purely physical. That's what's required to be able to go to the highest levels of the spiritual journey. And uh, so that, that speaks volumes right there. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, God's put a place in everyone's heart for him. So everyone's on a spiritual quest. And I don't know if because your background was, you know, Indian and, and that sort of thing with Hindu religion, if that was a natural progression for you to feel that spiritual yeah yeah i um i given my background of of hinduism and what i'd studied previously i'd studied so much of the the gita the you know all of the upanishads all of that studied deeply and various yoga masters you know so many yoga masters um in fact i thought that Jesus was just another master. You know, that's what the New Age teaches. Is, is That's the big thing. They'd say, oh, don't say it's bad. It's just he's just another master, you know. Um, and, and given my background with all of that, I fell right into this perfectly because given where we are in our experiences, Satan uses different traps for different people. And for, for I mean, this goes back. This is a big, uh, in, intense trap of the enemy. And so, yeah, my, my background was was um, always surround. I was always surrounded by Hindus my whole life. In fact, I don't remember maybe one or two Christians that I, I'd ever, really true Christians that I met. There's one funny thing. I remember going to, to church. Somebody had, when we first came to this country, I was only one years old, 
but somebody had invited my parents to a church. And like after that, my parents were like, okay, okay, we're not going to do that stuff. But one time we went. And I was really little. And I just remember uh, saying, I just said, Mom, Mom, can I say hallelujah, please, please? This was my only time I'd ever, my only experience of, under, of being around Christians ever. And I was really little. And I just said, please, can I say hallelujah? And I said, hallelujah. And I felt so happy. <laughs> and <laughs> and that, was the, that was it. Then after that, I'd never stepped into a church uh, from the rest of my life until, you know, afterwards. So that was my understanding. And I also had a negative perception. We were kind of taught a negative perception that Christians just want to go and convert you. That's all they want to do. They don't really care. They just want to convert you. And so uh, that was, that was the whole uh, understanding that I had. So my, my skewed perception was that anything but that is better, is more, is good for my soul, is more loving and, and all of those things. So, wow. yeah. It seems even then God was that was amazing. That was a little a little glimpse. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and so I'm sure many people who hear your story say it's that's an isolated experience. You know that happened to her, but that won't happen to me. Um, is this true? Which we can kind of answer that question with your testimony. But are you aware of others who've had the same, who've had negative physical and spiritual manifestations as a result of being involved in? Hatha yoga. Oh, sister, I am so grateful for how many people I encounter on a regular basis. Mm. It is so amazing, and I praise God, that, that, that share what they're going through. They just share what they've been through, or they, they just share what God has done in their life, and they've come out of the same things on a, on a very regular basis all the time that confirms that there's countless. I, I really can't even count how many yeah. because after the video went viral and, and so many things happened and, and, and the ministry has grown, you know, um, especially after meeting my husband and everything, that was another blessing that, you know, so many people have, have been sharing where they have come from. And, you know, they share that when they really want to give it all up and they're really seeking God's will, that's when he blessed them and showing them things and saying, okay, if you really want my will, then just, and he just starts rooting things out slowly. And he, and that's how it worked with a lot of people. Okay, just start looking at this, look at this, and you'll feel conviction and, and they would seek deeper and deeper. That's just an example of, of how God works when we really sacrifice everything. He'll, he'll bless us even more. With my husband, after I'd gotten better, um, I was getting healed and I was more, but I wasn't completely healed, but I was just getting there. I was so much better. I was saved. I was, you know, making videos and everything. And um, I was really confused about if I should have a man in my life or not. And there's these there's different men of God, godly men that are, are you know, contacting me, and I'm thinking, okay, well, which one, God? And it was so anxiety ready, ready. Like, I had so much, like, what is the right thing? And I was praying about it. And then finally, for the first time in my life, for the first time ever, I prayed very differently before I said, I said, Lord, I'm ready to be single for you, which is not anything I'd ever pray before. I was like, find me the right man like this. He'll be like this, and he should be like this. But, you know, I wasn't praying. Them. I prayed, if you really want me to be single, I'm ready to do that. And I meant it from my heart. And I said, but if you have somebody for me, then I need to know because otherwise this is messing everything up. <laughs> I, I'm so sick and tired of the, the anxiety about this. Please. And I was crying and crying for for hours. And the three days later, I, I meet my husband, and it's confirmed in so many different ways that he's the one, like, confirmation. And that's a whole other lecture. But, yeah, testimony. <laughs> But, but the point being that just it was, it was so um, interesting how everything changed when I completely submitted. I said, I'm, ready, I'm willing to be single for you. I mean, that was not easy for me to say in my heart. I'm like, I know I don't like it, but I'm doing it for you, Lord. You know, if, if that's what you want, you know best, you know. And, and so that, that's what he, and he blessed me abundantly. And after that, you know, our ministry uh, grew together and we do radio broadcasts and everything else. And then so more people started started sharing things with us just i was sharing with you and and brother of uh, the other maybe it was a month ago or maybe two months i'm not good with timing concepts okay. Me either <laughs> and there was a lady in the grocery store and 
I was I was just like getting coffee or something in the store. It had a coffee shop there. And she started talking to another person about yoga. And she was talking about, I just got done doing my this posture and this and that and that. And I said, okay, Lord. And I just prayed. I said, well, how do you want me to approach this? What should I say? What do I do? I need you. I can't do it. I don't know what to say. And I, and I never do when I approach it. I just let the Lord. And so uh, and then he led me to talk to her. And I just started asking her questions and talking to her. And she said, She's like, wow, wow. And she, she said she's a Christian. And so I was surprised that too because I thought she was really in like new age. I was surprised. And she said she's a Christian. And then she just got really emotional. We both started talking. I shared everything that I could, what I felt led by the Spirit. And she's like, God sent you to me. This is life-changing. She's like, I'm going to stop doing it. She was training to be a yoga teacher. Wow. And you know what was happening to her? It almost sounds like a similar experience to mine. She was so sick in her body that she was actually, she said she felt like she was dying and she was having digestive issues. She's like, I can't even eat anything. I was like, oh, this sounds so familiar. This sounds so familiar. And she was telling me this stuff. And so we prayed right there in the grocery store. I shared everything. We prayed for her afterward. She actually ends up uh, working at that store. I went there the next time to see her. And she said she had stopped all the yoga. She stopped everything, turned, repented from it and she feels great now and her wow. health is better she's she's better with the with her on track with the lord she said she could feel i remember this she could feel like the presence of god like she could, it was hindered like when she 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 explained that when she was doing this stuff and she just didn't put two and two together but she was trying to seek and when she was trying to seek i guess the timing that i happened to run into her and that she happened to just be talking about yoga and earshot away you know, and then the Lord just handled it. And so whether it's in person or uh, there's been so many examples. I know I won't keep on going, but there's so many that people have told me time and time again the same things that they've gone through, whether it be through email or Skype. And many of them we call and we pray with them and, and lead them out of it. Yeah. So there are many. I am not an isolated case. Yeah. That is so awesome. And it's, it's funny because what yoga often promotes is that it's going to benefit you physically. And it's kind of like the bait. And so then after a person yes. gets involved, you start having these physical symptoms. And you're thinking, well, what happened to the physical benefit? Right. <laughs> you know, and so that's, that's the deception, though. Yeah, sooner or later. Sooner or later. At first, it may not always rear its ugly head. It may just be a great false peace for who knows how long. But sooner or later, the path is destruction any way you look at it. It. Yeah, it was like you said earlier. You're covering up the wolf, so now the wolf's starting to bite. Yeah, <laughs> in the physical. Yeah, and that exactly. Was a great That's right. Example. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, coming to the end of our questions, so we can let um, our audience ask questions. In Revelations 12:11, if you can put that up on the screen, it says, "And they overcame him, meaning Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony." And so you just shared with us the kind of effect your testimony has had on other people. And so that scripture is just so appropriate uh, for what you have been describing uh, by the blood of the lamb and the testimony. So thank you so very much for being willing to share that because you are ringing that scripture too. And so within the yoga community, and outside of the yoga community, you can just give us a little, a little picture of what that transition was like for you. The transition of being within the yoga community and then becoming born again? Or the transition with people responding to God's, you know, delivering you within the yoga community okay. and you sharing your testimony. How was that transition for you from people's response, I guess, within the yoga community yeah. and outside of the yoga community? Yeah, um, the, this response, I'll start with within the yoga community, uh, from the people that I used to, you know, be doing the Isha Yoga stuff with, was largely, because I would go and talk, I sent my <laughs> document to everybody that I could possibly, you know, they probably, they're like, stop sending me stuff. But I, I wanted them to see this, and so a lot of them just ignore it, okay, within, like, the Isha Yoga community. Um and I got to keep on planting those seeds. There has been a couple of people, though, that have been had amazing testimony. They said that one lady, she was in Isha Yoga for like eight to ten years. 
And one of the things that led her out was reading that document, the Isha Yoga Roots document. And she came across it, and the Lord blessed her. And it said to her, that was like the nail in the coffin. She was already having suspicions. And then she read that, and she was like, okay, that's it. And then she gave her life to Christ. And that was. And then there was another, um, another guy as well that I was talking to that I actually knew personally in the thing. He has also responded positively. One of the things he said is that it was difficult for him to stop the practices because they were so addictive. And when he would stop the practices, he would start getting physical problems. And he had not given his life to Christ. He was just trying to stop the the practices themselves. And so, um, you know, I was explaining it's, it's about more than that. You got to, it's, it's just, it's not just about stopping the practice, but he was having such a bad time just stopping like a drug addict, right? It's like a drug withdrawal from yoga. Who knew, right? (laughs) That's a crazy thing, but he did. And he said that, you know, he worked in and out of that for so long and because he was deep involved also at the highest levels. And he ended up coming out and, and coming to the Lord. There's another lady uh, also after, you know, talking to her and I've reviewed some stuff and sending document. That was one of the things that, that helped her to come to the Lord. So that has been there. There are, there are people, but the vast majority so far, you know, and this can land on good ground later. But has ha, they have uh, rejected what... The, the truth is, and they just think that I'm, you know, I, I've gone off the deep end. <laughs> but without, outside of the yoga community, other Christians, for example, um, I get a mixed reaction. Uh, I get all kinds of different things, but a lot of support because a lot of people have been led in this. And as I shared earlier, some people have literally just changed their minds through the process. At first they were like, well, at first I saw your video, I thought you're a little bit extreme because it can't be that bad, but then I started praying and looking into it, and you know what? I'm coming to the same conclusion, you know? And so it's a process. And and some some people write straight forth, they're like, I've been waiting for some testimony, like this, this is it. You know, like they see it, they're like, I've been telling people, and they get excited, like somebody else is seeing it like me, and they express that. And so there's, there's a lot of different... Um, you know, reactions, but positive, negative, all of it through praise or blame, our job remains the same. Keep on exposing it. That's right, and you've planted the seeds, and so that's what's important. Yeah, hallelujah. It can land on good ground later. Yeah, okay, great. Um, Final question. If you could leave the people in the audience with one final thought to just really ingrain in their minds, in their hearts, uh, what would that be? If anything else about yoga specifically, and about even just our walk in general with God, is that if our heart is right, if our heart is really seeking, and and we, God will reveal all things. And so nobody's saying that you have to just do something right away because somebody said, but but prayerfully considering what has been spoken today, prayerfully, not in just thinking about it, but prayerfully considering, and God will reveal even more and more and more, even more than what, what's spoken, and, and show you many things that he may want you to show other people. And, and if I know that when our heart is sincere, and we really are willing to sacrifice our flesh and sacrifice what we think, our own ways, right, for God's ways, the blessing is beyond belief. The, the, what happens in the spirit realm is just incredible. Um, just that sincerity of heart. And so I trust and know anybody that's sincere in their heart that really wants to know the truth behind this and not make justifications and excuses for their own reasons, but I I trust to know that if if you prayerfully consider it, that the Lord will reveal more and more, especially if there's any doubt whatsoever in your heart. Amen, amen. And that scripture comes to mind with that, and that is we trust the Lord with all our heart. And lean not to our own, own understanding, understanding. but in all of our ways acknowledge him. He'll direct our path. So Amen. Um, thank you so much again, Sister Porvi, for what you're doing. God bless you Hallelujah. and your ministry. And um, we just want to open it up now for questions and answers. And uh, we have uh, Brother Randy who's going to facilitate that. Good afternoon, Progressive. Um, our first question is, What's your relationship like with your family now? It's a, it's a good question. It's a very good question because it's interesting. <laughs> um, my, when I first got saved, 
it was very difficult. I come from a all Hindu family all the way back. That means nobody ever in each side of my family, my mom or my dad, nobody has ever come to Christ, ever, for as long as, you know, however many that is. So that means I am a very strange person in their sight. I mean, this is very outside of the norm for them. So they consider it like, they considered it at the, at the time like it was devastating to them. Like my, it was devastating. So at first, it was, it was very difficult. And um, I, I just, you know, on the verge of them trying to kick me out sometimes. I love them so much and a lot has changed. But in the beginning, it was very difficult. Uh, but now I really do feel that the Lord is working on their heart. I've been praying for them, and they just say and do things that are just amazing, amazing. Like even at our wedding, like they're giving um, a Christian card with the Bible verses and different things that they would have never done. I've seen, we're, we're both seeing it. I mean, there's so much change I've seen in their their life and their in my, just willingness to listen. And so um, it's it's much better now, and I just keep praying for them. Please pray for my family. They are uh, definitely, it's a shock for them. Recently, along those lines of that question, I sent the Isha, this is funny that you asked, like, what was it, maybe a couple weeks ago, I sent this Isha yoga document to all my family members. My dad's one of 11, and he has, you know, I think nine are alive now or something. But I sent the Isha yoga document along with a handwritten letter, gospel tracts in each of their language, and the, whatever language, like Gujarati is what I, my native tongue. And, uh, you know, all of those things to all of, all of them, different places in India and London or all around the world, I sent it to them. And, you know, the reaction was like, okay, you know that they're going to think that you're really crazy, right? And I was like, yeah, but it doesn't matter because this is more important than anything. I cannot live knowing that somebody in my family died and I didn't say anything. And one of the people did contact me back and just just to, to try to be friendly and so out of all of those people. So that's that's a good thing. I'm trying to reach out. As far as my family, just one other thing to say about that. My, my grandmother, and this is a testimony that's um, on, on YouTube, is what's called Keep Praying for Your Unsaved Loved Ones. My, I'll try to make this quick. My grandmother, uh, before she died, she had dementia and cancer really, really bad. And she was in the hospice, and I had tried to talk to her about the Lord before, but she was a doctor, actually, which is very rare for a female doctor in that time. So she had this pride, like, oh, I know about that. I've studied about Christianity. I've studied about that. You don't need to tell me. I know. So it was that pride, and then as she got dementia, there was no opportunity to really talk to her. My mom would never let me talk to her alone about this t- important stuff. Then one day, oh, well, before I say that, Going to the hospice was very hard at, at one point because there was disease spreading in there and they weren't letting a lot of people in or whatever. And I wasn't seeing her often. I had my own illness issues. And so uh, I was just laying in bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. I went from deep sleep to wide awake. And I knew that the Lord was trying to tell me something. I didn't know what. So I was like, do you want me to read the Bible? I didn't know what he wanted. I had no clue. And he said, clearly, this is the first time this has ever happened to me, like, like clear. It was like, go to grandma. And I was like, not an audible voice, but just, you just know, go to grandma. I was like, okay. And I just knew I had to do it. Everything else had to be put aside. Well, it happened to be that I decided to go. And only that day, my parents, out of all the days, they went every single day. That day, they didn't go. They didn't end up going to visit her. So I had an opportunity. All of a sudden, this lady with dementia that is really, you can tell when people have dementia, she became clear-minded. She was talking normal. She was like she, her old self. She was so clear. Look at God. Yeah. Yeah. And I went in there and I said, Ma, I have to tell you something. Everyone was telling her, you're not going to die. You're going to come home and everything's going to be fine. I was like, Ma, you're going to die. I have to tell you this. But you got to know the truth before you die. And I, want, and I share the gospel with her in my language. And she received every single word. Praise God. And she started praising Praise Jesus and God. singing to the Lord. 
Oh my goodness, Pervy. She started singing to the. I'm not kidding you. You see this little energy. She can hardly have any energy. To, she goes, "Thank you, Jesus," like this. Awesome. And so, praise God. Shortly after that, she died. But I know that I do have a family member that I will see one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That is so awesome. God is so good. (laughs) Well, we have our next question, and that is, what is the role of meditation in yoga, and how can it affect a believer? Can you can you repeat that one more time? What is the the role of meditation in yoga, and how can it affect a believer? Okay, meditation. See, the, we talk, we're we talking about, you know, when the Bible says meditate on the Lord, that is a totally different thing. The, the type of meditation that is done in the Eastern traditions, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, and everything else, as we talked about, it, it actually alters one's consciousness, which is the point of it. They say mind um, yeah, emptying, as we talked about, right? So when you're doing that, what are you saying okay to? You're getting into a different state of consciousness. Even as, as, as a believer, are you meditating the way the Lord says meditate on the Lord, on the things of the Lord, or are you emptying your mind meditating, allowing something else to, to really alter you? Uh, you don't want to do that. It's not, it's not safe. It's not safe to do that. Just as, as uh, taking a drug or any other mind-altering substance would be equally as dangerous because actually the... Um, you know, some some people call al- certain alcohol spirits or whatever. That's an interesting name for it, right? Like, what are you doing? Why is it called spirits? Well, it's this is also in the, in the document. It was believed in in certain traditions that you know the spirits ha- are are working when you drink and things like that. So when you're altering your state, whatever way that is, whether that's through drugs, whether that's through the, the meditations that one does, or whatever way, when you're altering your state of consciousness, you, are become, you become vulnerable to demonic forces because it's not meditating the way that God said to meditate. You may say, oh, but I feel so relaxed and all. Yeah, so do, again, it comes back to, so do drugs feel good? It doesn't mean it's good. You know, so there's a big difference between meditating on the things of the Lord and thinking about the Lord, praising God and worship, and then doing the form of uh, meditation of that Eastern philosophy really uh, is about. So one of the questions says, to just be explicitly clear, are you saying no involvement in yoga for exercise? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's absolutely correct. And that, that leads right into this question. How would you minister to someone who is deeply in yoga or Hinduism in a way you can reach them and not think uh, you are um, trying to convert them, as you mentioned earlier? What? Well, for me, I always share my testimony, obviously, right? But if you don't have that testimony of yourself, it's, it's helpful to share others' testimonies and information with them in, in a loving way. And just, and, and just talking to them friendly. You're not saying, hey, you know what? Da, 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 you know, but just talking to them like, hey, you know, I used to think, if, if that's the case, that yoga was um, something different than it is. But, you know, I was, I was learning this stuff, and, and it's actually something more to it than meets the eye. And, uh, and oh, you might want to check out this testimony of this person. It's not just her. There's lots of people, and they're saying this. And so just something to, to look at. Here, here's some information. I just share all this in love. And actually saying to people that those words I'm sharing, I just share all this in love. Sincerely saying that. Not, this is in love, you know, but really sincerely saying it, <laughs> you know, uh, from your heart that, that makes people know. Even whether it's the gospel message that you say, look, I, I love you and I want you to know this. You know, anything is in love you're sharing. And... Um, and, and people will react their different ways. Then where it goes, it goes. People may get mad, manifest. I've had that happen to start and just start attacking. That may happen, but don't let that discourage you from sharing in the future, which the enemy wants you to do. That's what he wants is that, oh, if, if you shared, you have a negative reaction. Enemy's like, see, see, don't share again. Just keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. And you're going to say, nope, I'm going to keep on opening that mouth, and I'm going to keep on sharing this no matter what. The word of testimony. Yes, amen. <laughs> This next person wanted to thank you for sharing so transparently about your journey. And they ask, you mentioned your healing did not happen overnight. Can you share an overview of the steps God took you through in your healing journey? Yes, that was, it's been amazing. So 
at first, when I first got saved, there was a, a definite improvement. I could feel different in every way, physically as well as uh, emotionally and mentally, every way. I, I felt a difference. But um, I wasn't. Comp- I was still feeling some symptoms. There's still things that I was working through. Uh, there's a few things that, that are key highlights in, in the healing process. One is that I kept focusing on the Lord at all times, praising God, even in the midst of the pain. This is critical, critical, in the midst of it. And, you know, one of the things, one of the songs, I'm telling you, I play this over and over again, it ain't over, it ain't over. Do you know that song by C.C. Winans? <laughs> I would play that over. I'm serious, that was one of the things that got, got me so going. And then there was another song she had, You're Waging War. That one, I would just keep, and I'm like, yep, God said, it's not over, I'm not, I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to give up, give in, back down, move on, and I kept doing it, and I would All pray, right, Sister Furby. <laughs> and, and I would, and I would sing that in the shower, especially when I would feel the lowest and most broken, and I would feel like, I'm going to really, I can't, I don't know if I can do this anymore, God, and that's the moment I would start praising God, and I would say, you know what? Even if I end up dying, this was my thought in my prayer, even if I end up dying with this, and if it gets so bad that I die, I'm going to praise you in my last breath, till my deathbed, I'm going to pray, even if that's the case, even if that's what happens, but uh, I'm going to keep on holding on until, and I'm going to keep on praying and making my petition known, and I'm, I'm going to a- ask you for, for help, and I did. And then another component, very important, which I learned after meeting my husband, so all of that was extremely important for me to start uh, focusing on the things of the Lord, focusing on ministry and, 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 and helping other people instead of myself. That was the, another thing, is helping others, focusing my eyes on others rather than myself. I could have been in my room all day and just been like, woe is me. I, I am just so, nobody has to deal with this. Why do I have to deal with this? God, da, 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 da. I could have gone off. And I'm telling you, it was bad. It was real bad. I mean, you're talking about, one of the most extreme illnesses ever, even according to the doctors, right? So, but, but the Lord gave me strength when I focused on him and kept praising him more to focus on others and saying, okay, in the midst of this, let me still help other people that are involved in yoga. Let me keep on focusing on what I can do for them. How can I pray for you? Instead of constantly asking everybody to pray for me, I would just keep on wanting to pray for others and, and focusing my eye on, on how I can serve rather than how the, what, you know, yeah, exactly. What uh, the Lord can do for me, it was like, what can I do for you? That was another thing. A uh, third component, uh, as I said, which was very important, bold moves of faith. As my husband taught me, is just like really having, like understanding faithfully, like, Lord, I'm trusting you in this and in these symptoms right now. Okay, this is something that I literally did. Um, I would... There, there's, see, I don't believe that we can be possessed as Christians at all. We have the Holy Spirit. But there's oppression, right. you know, oppression That's in the Spirit. That's a good spirit. distinction. Yeah, there's oppression. Now, possession, sometimes it can feel so oppressing that you feel like it, it is possession. You know? So I would literally cast stuff away from me, and I would feel the difference like never before. And that was something after my husband and he would pray for me and he would share with me and be like, you know, what if you just in faith just started trying to, um, you know, grow your hair and even if you get symptoms, whatever, and all these things. And I kept on doing that in faith and casting stuff away and and trusting God and saying, I'm going to do this. This was a, a pivotal moment. I remember I was at the restaurant. I could never eat outside food before. Like I would, one time I ate four bites of outside food and I was sick for one week. My stomach was so sick. For one week sick. So I was like, no, no, outside food, no, I don't want to go near that. Once you get your hand touched in fire, you don't want to go, right? But my husband and I went out, and I was just like, okay, you eat, you eat. Yeah, but I'm just sitting here. And he said, why don't you try to, you know, and just pray about it and think. I prayed, and I said, I really don't think I can do this. Da, da, da. And I'm praying to the Lord, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? Please tell me. And I really clearly got that without faith, it's impossible to please him. This is what I got, like directly. I was like, oh, wow, okay, I'm doing this in faith, and I'm just going to trust you, and Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking you on this. I ate the food. We prayed over the food. We prayed together about it, and I was just fine. And I had no problem with my meal or anything after that. And that was another, you know, pivotal moment. So I think... Everything combined, and, and, and persisting through in all of these points, persisting 
continuously and enduring in that. And, and it, it's a continual thing. Every single day, I'm moving forward, I'm moving forward, I'm not going to look back, I'm getting better, I'm, you know, and, and keeping my eye on the prize. <laughs> that is awesome, yeah. All right, our next question, I'm going to combine two because we're running out of time. Sorry, I go long. No, it's not your fault. We had our question and answer session. These are just the additional questions you guys have asked so many. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, so I'm doing my best to pick out ones that I think can benefit everybody. Is there a connection between Pilates and yoga? And I'm going to throw in Tai Chi um, as well. And is there anything that you're aware of that ties those two similar demonic forces or things along those lines? Pilates, Tai Chi. Tai Chi, not good. Yoga, uh, Pilates, I have not found anything that would be a problem with Pilates. I have looked into that. I know you, sister, have. I haven't found any. And, in fact, that's one of the things that um, I would recommend if you want to exercise Pilates. I have looked that there's nothing that I see at all that is that's wrong with Pilates. Tai Chi is, is different. And um, you're, it's energy manipulation. So Tai Chi involves energy manipulation, and it's real energy, it's not just a perceived energy, so um, that's in essentially what sorcery is, it's essentially energy manipulation, I mean the guru that I was following, he's ma- manipulating different things with, with magic and, and different ways of uh, even so-called healing people, which is not a really healing, you know, and so anytime you have, whether it's Reiki, you may have heard of Reiki, it's, it's, it's a type of energy uh, manipulation it's, 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 it's to stay away from you don't want to do that I mean it's like it is a form of, of sorcery and everything else I would say and that's why it says in one of my interviews yoga is a form it's a form of witchcraft when you come down to it so all of that stuff I would ignore Pilates though good <laughs> and I was just going to add a little bit um, what I found from my research is that there's a gentleman by the name of Joseph Pilates and he actually developed the discipline for um, dancers therapeutically to help them to be strong, to be flexible, and things of that such. And then this will be our last question. Um, many seek yoga for relief from chronic pain. What role did pain play in your journey and connection with yoga? Did you say many seek relief from chronic from, pain? From pain, yeah. By doing yoga, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. Mean, so how, what role did pain play in your journey? Like how did that? Yeah, um, my my thing, the reason I was obviously seeking yoga wasn't for pain relief. I know that that is something that a lot of people um, say they use yoga for. But again, there's these other alternatives. Pain came for me after I, I was all the demonic stuff started happening, and it was very painful. I had twitching, muscle pain. I had all kinds of pain and, and reactions. So if you just look at it, if you're looking for a physical relief, right, and, and you think that yoga is the, the answer, you're getting more than you, way, way more than just a physical anything. You're getting a false, if you do feel better from it, you're getting a, a false physical manifestation or whatever deception. And on top of that, there's all this other stuff, as we talked about, that goes along with it. So you just can't separate it. It's, it's, it's a one of those danger zones, don't even do it, don't even try. It's not that stretching in itself is wrong. Stretching is very good. Stretching does help the muscle. It helps our health. As Brother was explaining, it, it is not the stretching that is the issue, which is why Pilates or, or just even doing stretching on your, on your own will give different pain relief. It will strengthen your muscles on its own by itself. And so it's not necessarily that it has to be done again in a specific form the way that that yoga has to to reap physical benefits if you have physical issues there's many different routes to go about doing that and then we're wrapping up on time and i'm going to take the liberty of asking a final question um in a video that rodney showed to our salt class that's currently looking at hinduism one of the things that was proposed was that through yoga the west and you spoke a little bit to this has created a silent army that may actually help Christians fall away from the church through these things like Christian yoga. Uh, can you comment on that briefly? And then the final question, I'm going to ask a double. So comment on that, and then please tell us where we may be able to get any of your materials, books, or things along those lines. Yes. Yeah, Christian yoga. If we compound this in, very, 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 very important that there is no such thing that it is it's a complete deception that they're, they're literally, you cannot serve two masters, 
right? You just cannot do it. You cannot drink of the cups of the Lord and the cup of the devil. You can't do it. So if you think that you are somehow and that it's not a big deal and that you're serving the Lord, then please reevaluate and please prayerfully seek. Uh, there's no question about this. I would say if there's some, I would, I would tell you honestly, you know, if there was any way that I felt the, the Lord was saying that there's some leeway in this or there's some way around, <laughs> there's just not. It's, he just does not want any appearance of evil to do anything with this. So um, as a Christian, these are very important answers that we have to look to to understand um, what's behind the, the identity the identity of who is behind yoga and the identity we have discovered through the Bible, through what, I mean, if the serpent thing doesn't even hit us in the head, what will, right? Kundalini, serpent energy, Bible says the serpent is the Satan, you know. Uh, we got to look, the identity behind the formulation of yoga and Hinduism is Satan, is, is the devil, the biggest deceiver, who comes as an angel of light, and so do his minions, those that follow him. So they are doing this. And that's exactly where the identity. Now, we can choose to accept that that's where it is or make our own excuses, you know. Um, and as far as the, the other part, yeah, you, as a brother mentioned, we can, uh, you can go to martisministry.org. We do radio broadcasts, and, and there's videos on there, too, and there's the YouTube videos. And the one YouTube video, as I mentioned, is from Occult Yoga to Jesus Christ. That's the one that um, I first put out so long ago, five minute, you know, video. And you can search that on, on YouTube. And um, could you spell that for the audience? Just sure. Yeah, M-A-R-T-U-S-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot org. And um, and you can even search the site if you want to see the document. You, in the search of that, you can see, you can just put Isha Yoga, or even Yoga probably would come up, and then you'll be able to, to read the document also. Uh, it has more detail about actually the origins of Hinduism as it relates to Egypt and, and, and how that all goes together and um, the calf worship and all of that stuff. Remember the golden calf and all that stuff? Well, guess what? Sitting That was sitting in my... Mom's front living room was a little brass uh, calf, and it, I realized there's a reason for that. And I was like, "Hold on, this is just not a coincidence." And uh, it it goes back, so it's a lot of the same identifying markers that we can see, uh, the same stuff over and over again coming up. The serpent being good, the golden calf veneration, you know, uh, or, or cow worship, all of that type of stuff. So there's a lot that goes into it. You can check out that document yourself and. If you have prayer requests, we have a, a section there. You can submit your prayer requests um, um, as it relates to anything. And uh, we'd be more than happy to pray for you guys. And thank you for your prayers, too. Let's give Sister Forby a hand. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you guys. Thank you for your hospitality.